let's take a detailed uh, example let's take this one and we in in this example which has like seven different instructions and in that respect we will also study something like a reordering solution for data hazard uh, situation so this one is basically loading from two data from the memory and using both of them in an in an addition operation then storing that addition result to the memory then loading another data from the memory then we use that information into another another addition and then finally we store that data into uh, into the memory so if we try to draw the relations between these instructions especially between different phases different cycles of the instruction we can do it in this way okay and i'll also show you a formal way of doing it in a more like a spreadsheet table i'll show you but let's uh, explain it in conceptual notion that we first discover the dependencies okay so we see that your addition third instruction addition is really depending on the data committed into the register file uh, into these two register r1 and r2 right so it is this will be committed back in the register file at write back stage so this this exe cycle or exe phase of the third instruction execution is really depending on write back completion of instruction one and instruction two so we make that arrow okay they are dependent and for the fourth instruction and third instruction relation is that in the third instruction is producing the result in r3 and which is will be ultimately committed back to the register file on write back stage and that being used into store word right and which will be needed at the memory phase right so so we make a draw an arrow between write back of the third instruction to the memory of the fourth instruction so what in essence what we are trying to do here is we are trying to spot where that data being committed okay which cycle usually it is write back where the register file get updated and when i am actually using it okay when i am actually using it so that's the arrow relation similarly between 4 and 5 uh, no it's not 4 and 5 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 fifth instruction sixth instruction your data is committed to r4 at the right back stage of fifth instruction and it is used in the exe phase of the sixth instruction so that dependency we mark similar dependency we can mark between 6 and 7 where right back to the r5 okay the, your memory of memory memory phase of the instruction 7 the data source is depending on right back onto the uh, for the instruction 6 so we make that relation so then what we'll do will look at where that data is being produced okay and if there is a possibility we can forward it or not so we look at the first relation okay this between this committing data r1 and used in the 3 exe we see clearly the data is produced at the end of the memory stage and being used at the exe beginning of the exe phase so they are kind of in line in the same time right when when the memory operation is done for the first instruction we are just beginning the execution of the third instruction so we can forward that data but that's not the case for the second instruction because when the data is produced that is it is end of the memory cycle the data is produced but it is needed 
one cycle before for the third instruction. So, this is not uh, to be uh, cannot be resolved with the data forwarding. Similarly, your instruction 3 is generating the data at exe phase, end of the exe phase, which is needed at the beginning of the memory phase for the fourth instruction. So, we can do a theta forward, that is future in line, timeline. So, we can do a forward, but we cannot do a forward for resolving dependency between fifth instruction and sixth instruction because your data is produced at the end of the memory cycle, but your data is needed at the beginning of the exe cycle of the next instruction. So, they are not in, 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 in a time, their time is not in phase, like they are just out of sync. But we can do a data forward from 6 to 7 because data is produced at end of the exe cycle and consumed at the beginning of the memory cycle of the next instruction. So, we can do that. So, we can do, we can resolve like 3 out of 5 uh, data hazard in with the data forward without doing anything, but we still need to do 2 data hazard solving. Uh, which is not yet solved by the data forwarding and we need to have a stall there. Okay. So, let us do this idea in on, on spreadsheet or table based so that it can be more formalized in a sense we can do it on the paper pencil. So, same problem, same problem I just put it in a table format where one column says it is an instruction IDs and then, then your statement and then looking at this cycles or time period that is cycle 1, t1, t2, t3, t4, t5 till t11. Okay. And we are placing these cycle names like if, id, rf, exe, mem, wp in a pipeline fashion. So, and also I am just doing some color code just for our, our uh, understand, better understanding, uh, but you do not need to color code just what you need to do, identify the generator and consumer or producer and consumer, that would be the better term, producer of the data and consumer of the data. So, in this case, producer of the data is instruction 1 and consumer is instruction 3, producer is instruction 2, consumer is instruction 3, then producer is instruction 3, consumer is instruction 4, producer is instruction 5, consumer is instruction 4 and also by the way, uh, sorry, uh, producer is consume instruction 5 and consumer is instruction 6 for that. Not only that, if you think your uh, producer is instruction 1 and that consumer is also instruction 3, right? So, in this case. But we are not worried about this because if you see number 6 instructions, instruction decode and register fetch cycle, it is way after your write back is done. So, they do not have a data hazard between them. So, we are not worrying about the data hazard between instruction 1 and instruction 6. They are kind of well apart from each other. And Please take a note on this well apart concept. Like if two signals, so two instructions are well apart, they do not pause, they do not uh, pause this data hazard situation. And we can extend that idea that if we can somehow shift the instruction by stalling or the new term by reordering of the instruction, then we can resolve the forward, uh, resolve the data hazard with the data forwarding without needing of stall. Okay, we will we'll come back to that one. Just, just hold on a minute. Let me just finish up this table. So, here what we are trying to do, we are now trying to draw the dependencies first. Okay, so, your, your uh, instruction 1 completion of the write back is depending on your, uh, sorry, it's it's basically your instruction 3's beginning of ex execution cycle depending on 
completion of right back stage of instruction one and instruction two. And then memory, beginning of the memory stage, memory cycle of instruction four is depending on right back completion of instruction three and exe of the uh, beginning of the exe of the sixth instruction is depending on the right back completion of the five, fifth instruction and then uh, memory beginning of the memory cycle is of the seventh instruction is depending on completion of the right back of the sixth instruction so this is this is the arrow that that denotes that and we can just capture that that notion in a table format data hazard and resolution table and let's mark it original like what we are observing now right so your stage of three third instruction ex phase or stage is depending on first instruction right back phase and third instruction ex phase is depending on second instruction right back and so on and so forth we just mark the dependencies and if you think critically, you will see in the dependency column is is a right back. Okay, and and the consumer is basically either your exe or mem. Okay, you 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 don't expect any other stages there. So that is one way to kind of double check if your thinking thought process is correct or not. You will see the right back on the dependencies column and exe or mem on the like from which stage is depending on that that uh, that right back now we look at the timelines first okay look at the timelines so we can say that now this first hazard okay my data production is done at the end of the mem cycle of first mem cycle and consumer third exe which timeline is kind of aligned right your end and begin of the exe end of the mem begin of the exe so we can do a forward resolution and forward from my memory stage okay of the first instruction the second one we cannot do anything because its production is at end of the memory stage which is not aligned with the or not in phase with the exe of third instruction so we cannot do anything stall there and then the next one is again we can do by forwarding from exe phase the other one is stall and forward from exe phase now this is more localized solution means what you need to understand now so this is our first resolution first revision of resolution that i will need a forward the other one cannot be done with forward stall next one can be forward and otherwise we can stall and next one can be forward now remember if we introduce a stall and also we need to ask ourselves how many stall is needed okay usually it is it is kind of one stall like i haven't seen more than one stall maybe i can think of some situation where it can take more than one stall but one stall is fine okay in most of the cases so <coughs> one stall means we are actually shifting the instruction stages of successive instructions all the instruction are shifted by one clock now with that shift it might happen the next stall you may not need might happen okay so you need to be careful on that so this is your first revision right and then second revision we do uh, so let's say let's say we we come up with this one right so let's look at this solution my original solution is we need to forward stall forward stall so now look at this one first one second one is fine the third execution i need to stall stall means this stage the third execution i need to stall so i make a bubble there just put a zero and shift 
from there everything else like right? so that means you need to shift for the instruction 4 and instruction 5 as well you shift those instructions and this is how the real stall is done not that whole all of the phases all of the stages if id ex mem and write back all of them for a particular instruction are shifted what is done is done okay so we are done with third instruction instruction fetch instruction decode it is only that third instruction execution phase need a stall so we stop that for a one cycle and push it to the next cycle basically okay how it is done it's not our concern right now okay just it is done it can be done just take it granted this can be done on the hardware through some complex circuitry of course uh, and then uh, we, we we can achieve this but strategy is this like we we, we need a stall at 3exe we stop that pipeline at that point for one cycle so that everything kind of delayed from that point onward for one cycle and once it is done then you see i can forward from both instruction one and instruction two into the execution phase of the third instruction so boom we are done then did it solve the uh, data forwarding uh, or something no next is forwarding so we don't need to worry about that so mem stage exe stage end to the beginning of the mem stage data forwarding okay it still holds and then then the fifth instruction has to be fifth mem right has to be forwarded to the execution of the sixth Oh, okay. So what happened here? Fifth execution. Am I skipping one one of them? Oh, so we just done with the sixth ex. How about fourth mem? Right, fourth mem is data forward. So we are done with that. Now we are looking at six exe and five wb that part, and we stated that we still need a stall. We still need a stall because your fifth wb is still one cycle away from starting of the mem cycle right so so your you still need a stall for solving sixth execution so sixth instruction execution is stalled of course successive instruction instruct uh, phases are stalled as well then we can forward the data production from the load word at the end of the mem cycle to the beginning of the exe cycle of instruction 6 and then the next one 7 mem uh, to 6 wb data forward that still holds and we from the exe phase end of the exe phase we send the data to the beginning of the memory phase of the seventh instruction so apparently for this problem the first stall did not help onto the second stall in this in this example some example it may all right so you watch out for that the second if you create first stall your second second data hazard may automatically gone right by that relation 